So our next speaker is Zach Smith, who is going to tell us about green roofs at Seattle U. Take it away, Zach. Thanks, everyone. It's been a great talk so far. Uh, my name is Zach Smith. I use him as pronouns. I'm a sophomore studying environmental studies and public affairs at Seattle University, and I'll be talking about green roofs, uh, what they are, the benefits, and uh, looking at the ones at Seattle University. A lot of this information comes from my time interning with SU Grounds and Landscaping, where I now work as a gardener. Uh, so a simple way to define a green roof is to just call it a roof built to support vegetation and soil layers. They generally fall into three categories. First one is extensive, which is a pretty short uh, soil depth, which generally has vegetation such as sedum, as in the seen in the bottom left photo of the slide. And the second one is semi-intensive, which is a little deeper. Oh, please stay on that slide. Thank you. Uh, it's a little deeper, which um, uh, has usually bushy, taller grasses on it. And then the third type is extensive, which is a pretty deep soil depth, and you'll probably see uh, big trees or bushes on that. Okay, now next slide. Thank you. Uh, so generally benefits with green roofs, they reduce urban heat island effect very well. They absorb stormwater, which is really important for Seattle University and its location. They take CO2 out of the air um, and they extend roof life and efficiency while also reducing the costs associated with normal roofs and they support biodiversity. And that picture is generally what you would see under a green roof when you separate out all the layers. Next slide, please. So looking at Seattle University, there are actually two green roofs at SU. Uh, one is the admissions green roof. It's a short extensive one, so one with the sedum on it. Um, but there are certain access issues to that. So I focused on the Bannon green roof, which is a intensive green roof. It has a really deep soil depth, about 66 centimeters. It was built in the 1990s, has excellent skylights. When you walk under those skylights in the biology uh, hallway classroom, it's really nice. Um, the problem is though, it was only supposed to last about 15 years. So that's created quite a lot of issues um, as seen in the foreground of this photo with this big pine tree, uh, that's not supposed to be leaning. So a lot of the depth of the, of the green roof, it's sunk about eight inches. And so it needs a lot of updating. There's a lot of invasive weeds there as well. Um, so in looking forward, next slide, please. Uh, in trying to reimagine the space, uh, Grounds has gone to Nakano Associates to get a couple concepts to think about how to redo it. This concept, I think, is great. It would add a nice walking path throughout the green roof around the skylights. Uh, this little area to sit down and relax and enjoy it. It'd update the vegetation, add blueberry clusters for pollinators. And uh, so then part of my internship, next slide, please, and also uh, culminated in doing a a green roof sign. This is the draft of the sign. I'm unfortunately not like Marguerite, a design major. So um, I'm still working on this. And uh, I, but I think it would be really important to have this roof on, on, on the campus and show off this sign a bit more. Um, next slide, please. And so overall uh, challenges to having green roofs all around campus would be, we can't just throw around green roofs on top of every single roof. Um, they're, they would not support that, um, they just fall. So as well, there's maintenance and safety issues with the admissions green roof. I can't access it, no one can, grounds can't. So we don't really know the condition of it, um, which is why I think going forward as well, we should look to still use green roofs in future development, um, but they should be accessible and probably be more of the extensive type, which is that short sedum growing one. But I do want to, to uh, caution that green roof should not be used to replace green density that we have on campus. Um, that's not a replacement, proper replacement for it. And I think, so therefore we should just focus on updating the banding green roof, use the concepts that Nakano has given us, update that soil, um, because this, that green roof is really, really important for uh, SU's goal of carbon neutrality as a campus, and also as a green infrastructure option for helping to mitigate the impacts of climate change. So that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Please feel free to email me any questions you may have. Thank you.